Hello and thank you so much for joining me for this video. I hope that you guys are off to a great start for your week. And then we're going to be discussing the Atlanta Hawks here, starting with Nick McMillan, who has become the permanent head coach. He was the interim head coach, and he did a fantastic job going 37-19 and 19 in terms of what he was able to do in a regular season and also an Eastern Conference berth in the playoffs with these Atlanta Hawks exceeding all expectations that after the team started off 14 and 20 so he rose above and beyond um, as they say down here um, for the Falcons rise up he did that for this team and more but there are plenty of questions for this team so I'm also going to cover towards the tail end of this video what's next for the Atlanta Hawks you know in terms of just their offseason you know what are some questions or concerns that we may have or what to look forward to this offseason but first things first let's give Nate credit here because he did an absolutely fantastic job and I love the decision here to go Go ahead. Let's not play any games. Let's make him permanent head coach. Team season just came to an ending, but he really rose up and his team rose up and they respond great to him. He, he had some great adjustments throughout plenty of the series and the games that they played. And although they fell short, you know, you can say injuries played a role, a lot of things. But one thing we know is that this team went out there and they played with heart. That is for sure. So glad to see Nate with that um, opportunity to continue to be the coach. Um, and this right here states that, you know, his new deal as the Atlanta Hawks head coach is for four years. So that's pretty good right there um, that he's going to have four years to go ahead and try to improve this team. Now, obviously, for um, the Atlanta Hawks and their fan base, you know, they've got championship aspirations now. You know, they're happy with what the team did, but at the same time, you know, they're tired of seeing their team be disappointed year after year after year. They want to actually be able to compete for championships. That's the goal. That's why you play the game, as Herm Edwards would say. You play to win the game. And so these Atlanta Hawks, they're going to have quite a few things that they want to focus on in this offseason. But really quickly, just to highlight Nick McMillan's, um, you know, career, he's actually been, you know, in terms of just in the coaching aspect, you know, he started um, his first coaching opportunity back in 2001 with the Seattle Supersonics back then. So that's going back. And he was with the um, Supersonics from 2001 to 2005. Um, and throughout that time, you know, he it was able to – I mean, have some success, some real success there. I mean, he was a coach um, for a total of 16 years. Um, but after that, he went to the Portland Trail Blazers. And during that time, he would be with the Portland Trail Blazers all the way from 2006 through 2012. And so after taking a year off in 2013, he'd return in 2014 with the Indiana Pacers from 2014 all the way through 2020 with the Indiana Pacers. And then prior and then this season was his first season with the Atlanta Hawks as an assistant. And wow, talk about taking an opportunity and then making it your head coach in the first year that you basically have been with the team. So this was absolutely fantastic right here. So happy for him. You know, he went to North Carolina State University in terms of his college and has a career record of 693 wins to 602 losses over the span of 16 years. So absolutely fantastic. He was actually born in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, in case you didn't know that. Now, he also played some basketball you know, on the court as well in the NBA. And so that all started back going back to his early time with Seattle, going back to 1990, I mean, 1986-87 season. At that time, he was 22 years old and averaged 5.3 points a game, as well as um, 8.2 assists. And so he was certainly, you know, someone he got to start 50 games that year. So that's not bad. 50 out of 71 that season. And the 1987, 88 season, he also would start 82 games, which would be the only time that he would play the entire season. Um, and that time he averaged his career high 7.6 points a game, um, along with 8.6 assists and 2.1 steals a game there. Now, um, he would remain with Seattle all the way throughout his entire career. He played with Seattle, which is probably why he ended up getting his first coaching opportunity, you know, as an assistant with those um, Seattle Supersonics back then, because he played his entire career from the 1986-87 season all the way through the 1997-98 season, in which he was 33 years old, in which he played his last season during that year. And so 
obviously once you build that type of connection you know which is why we really emphasize networking and stuff he found that opportunity and then i told you earlier how that played out there and now he's in a position that he's in right now but there are still questions that have to be answered for these atlanta hawks you know i mean despite the fact that they had a magical postseason run um but it fell short against milwaukee in game six you know so many things you know different factors played a role into that one but these hawks they kept rising to the occasion every step of the way in the postseason i mean starting with the first series against the next i mean the knicks and i mean man they um really was able to really have some success early in the series on the road you know being able to despite being the underdog and just about all of this series, they were able to win um, six road games, including game one of each round, as well as, um, you know, close out game five of the opening round, game seven of the Eastern Conference semifinals. So this team, you know, they came out there and they played, you know, outstanding. But, you know, there's going to be some things that they're going to have to do this offseason if they want to improve. And that's going to start, I think, with, you know, you want to protect your key players, first of all. John Collins, that should be top priority in my opinion. I mean, he turned down the contract extension worth, I think it was like $90 million at the time. And so he's entering the offseason as one of the you know biggest free agents on the market. Now, this past season, he averaged about 17.6 points a game, um, about 7.4 rebounds. And so um, he certainly, you know, he had some ups and some downs in the postseason. I mean, sometimes, you know, he would get in foul trouble, which did cost him a couple of times. I know in this past round against Milwaukee, just, you know, because of the intensity that he plays with. But when he goes out there, you look at the um, game one in which they went down to Milwaukee and win. I'll use that, for example. I mean, my man was getting a ton of rebounds. And when he gets going, that's the type of energy that this team feeds off. of. So certainly being able to retain someone like John Collins, that is going to be absolutely huge, I feel. And then you've got guys like, you know, obviously, you know, Lou Will, you know, coming off the bench. He's going to be 35 next season. But, you know, he's had moments where he's been huge for this team and just his veteran presence and what he can do with the ball. I like that coming off the bench. And so if they can, can re- retain him as an unrestricted free agent, that would be nice as well. Um, and then, you know, there's the question about Trey um, Young. He's also entering his fourth Yes, fourth NBA season. So he's eligible now for a contract extension. So the fact that he's now entered into, I believe, as some would categorize it as that superstar territory. Um, So he, you know, is definitely capable of being able to receive that maximum contract extension. And certainly, you know, the decision of, you know, how that's going to play out will certainly impact the future of these Atlanta Hawks. But certainly, you know, I do feel that they need to continue to try to get bigger, bring and acquire some guys that's going to come in that can be able to handle that ball. Now, I know that they have a ton of guys in their team that can come in and, you know, they can get you some points. But, you know, if they can get more guys that are used to creating their own type of shot that's comfortable and doing that consistently, because there were times in the playoffs where it looked like, you know, especially when Young wasn't in there, that they just had a couple guys, you know, between Herder, Bogdanovich, those guys, you know, don't get me wrong, they, they're good shooters and stuff. But there are times where they just did not look natural in terms of just handling the ball, bringing it up. And there's just so much that's re- that this team relied on um, Young to do that it just, you know, they need to bring in some more guys. But the good news is after the season that they had, you know, this is the perfect time to recruit those missing pieces that can help you elevate your game to the next level. Um, well, first things first, they got to decide, you know, what type of free agents, you know, that's currently on their roster are they going to be able to retain, you know, I mean, whether it's the unrestricted free agents, guys like Lou Will, as I mentioned before, um, there's Tony Snell, there's, you know, Solomon Hill. And then you look at the um, restricted free agents. I mean, you know, Brandon Goodwin mentioned John Collins earlier, Skylar Mays, Nathan Knight. Um, and then, you know, player options as Chris Dunn. So got to see how they can um, utilize that. Now, according to Real GM's Keith Smith, um, the maximum amount of cap space that the Hawks can potentially create this offseason would be $21.1 million. And so they've got to figure out how they're going to utilize that. Um, and then in terms of, you know, in the draft, you know, wherever they're going to be drafting from, you know, what who's someone that they can, you know, potentially bring in that can come in and help contribute to this team. I mean, there's quite a few guys that, you know, that I've seen their names thrown out, such as, you know, um, Cameron Thomas from LSU, you know, six foot four um, point guard, you know, averaged about 23 points a game as a freshman with the Tigers. And so, you know, adding him to the mix would certainly be someone that can come in and continue to, you know, bring in scoring when he comes in the game. So that's certainly someone to consider. Um, and then there's guys like I, I've seen Jeremiah uh, Robinson Errol, who's also been someone else that's been linked to this from Villanova. 
Um, and so, I mean, he's someone that's expected to go in the late 20s. And his player comparison has been Larry Nance Jr., Jeff Green, guys like that. So we will see the direction that these Hawks take. But this is going to be a pivotal, pivotal um, offseason here for these Atlanta Hawks. And so this is going to be a team that I'm going to be tracking to see, you know, if they're able to make the right moves. It's going to better position them for long-term success. As I feel like these Atlanta Hawks, they did great, but I feel like they maxed out. You know, like they played to their A-plus potential many times when they needed to during the postseason. And that's just not something that's easy to replicate, you know, time and time again, which is why they fell short to Milwaukee. Because there's so many different factors, you know. Um, they have to be able to start winning these rebound battling. That's something that they cannot continue to struggle with when it comes to, you know, rebounding and giving, especially when you're giving the opposing team second chance points. You have to look at who's in the Eastern Conference. You've got teams like the Brooklyn Nets, for example. You know they're going to come back stronger, bigger. They're already talking about potentially bringing in a guy like, well, Kevin Love, you know, has Brooklyn at the top of, um, you know, his list. So if they do decide to move on to Blake Griffin, that's someone that they can bring in. So they could potentially be bringing in another star. And then, you know, you know, Boston, they're going to be aggressive. They've already shown that and trying to, you know, improve as well. And so there's just so many good teams in that Eastern Conference. You cannot overlook Milwaukee and what they're doing right now. And, and you know, we have just saw that series. So they've got to be able to rebound better as well as have more guys that can create their own shots at a high level consistently in my opinion so therefore it's going to be important to see what these hawks can do but this is a team that i'm really intrigued in the potential there and i'm glad that they were able to secure nate mcmillan for four more years and let's see what he's able to do with this team i mean hawks fans should be excited but it's going to be very important this offseason but you know with that being said you know Thank you so much for joining me for this video, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Looking forward to seeing, you know, this, the championship round here, you know, Suns and Milwaukee Bucks, see how that plays out. And then after that, the offseason, you know, I'll be tracking it. So make sure if you haven't already, consider subscribing, you know, so that way I can keep you up to date with, you know, news, whether we're talking basketball news, football news, football season right around the corner, you know, so a college football, college basketball occasionally. I'll throw that in as well, you know, be streaming those games. So certainly consider subscribing and liking the video. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.